most of what I do now is, um, well, I make planes and people like them and I get lovely little letters from them <laughs> about them because what I do is keep them unt and shape them until they are comfortable for me with the thought that if they're comfortable in my hands, they'll be comfortable in someone else's. And uh, it's very modest. I don't want them to be fancy. You know, like a carved handle and uh, this and that and the other thing. If I just want to be amusing, I'll make a, a wedge out of another kind of wood or something like that, you know. I could never understand why so many companies prefer to have a pistol grip on the plane forcing you to rely on his hand being vertical and holding that thing rather than just being relaxed. And if you want to cut more on this side, you move the plane over and use the weight of the plane to accentuate the shaving. I inherited some of that, uh, I suppose some people will call it snobbishness. It's a sense of, well, sort of a snotty independence, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't give a damn if, if what the style is, what the computer is designing. An imperfect plane complains. It vibrates. Your teeth are chattering. It's just a simple little tiny vibration and the wrong sound. You know, it's like tearing paper. It's not running your fingers over a silk cloth. It's more like tearing paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. I've got a plane up there on that cabinet that I'm, I'm never going to finish. The damn thing vibrates. And I've tried this, and I've tried that, and I've sworn, you know, dirty language and all kinds of nasty things. I put it away. You want your tool to to be enjoyable and reliable and uh, and it purrs like a cat, you know? And it feels good. 